Hello everyone, welcome back to another MCR uh, 3U1 video and today we are continuing chapter 7, we are doing section 7.5 on arithmetic series. Here's the chapter outline once again and you can find extra practice questions on today's topic on pages 452 to 453. Now here's the success criteria for today's lesson, um, so let's go over it real quick. We want to gain overall understanding about series. That's the main goal here. We want to explore the characteristics about arithmetic series in specific and be able to calculate the sum of these series. Um, and then we want to learn about partial sum um, for arithmetic uh, series and its general formula, specifically for arithmetic series. Okay, let's go over some important definitions that we should know about arithmetic series and series in general. First off, what is a series? A series is the sum of the terms in a sequence. It's just the sum. So if we take a look at the example sequence down here, the series of the sequence 2, 4, 5, 12, and 13, that is our sequence of numbers. From We have 2, 4, 5, 12, and, and 13. We have a series, uh, sorry, a sequence of five numbers, and those are the terms. And the series of that sequence is 2, plus 5, uh, sorry, 2 plus 4 plus 5 plus 12 plus 13, which will give us 36. So we're just adding the terms in a sequence. That's what our series is. Now an arithmetic series is just, um, it's just simply the series of an arithmetic sequence, right? So uh, the only uh, difference about series and arithmetic series is with ar arithmetic series, we are working with arith arithmetic sequences. So if we take a look again at the example below, we have um, an arithmetic sequence of 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10, right? Because we have the same common difference between each term. We're just adding 2 to get the next term. So this arithmetic series of this, of this arithmetic sequence is simply the sum of all the terms. So 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 and plus 10, which will give us 30. Okay, pretty simple. And lastly here, we have partial sum. And this is the sum of the first n terms of a sequence, which is defined as s of n, right? So we're adding all the numbers from the first term to the nth term. So whatever that little subscript under the s is, and the s, uh, we use it to represent partial sum. We do s and the subscript of the term we wanna go to. So if we take a look at this example, we have s of 3, so we want to take the partial sum of the first three numbers of the sequence 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10, which is the same um, sequence we had up here. Um, and the first three terms are 2, 4, and 6, right? 2 is the first term, 4 is the second term, 6 is the third term. So if we add them up, we get 2 plus 4 plus 6, which equals 12. But remember, that little subscript tells us what um, term we want to go to. So, as I said before, an arithmetic series is created by adding the terms of an arithmetic sequence, right? So for the sequence 2, 10, 18, 26, and so on, that sequence keeps going. That's what um, we represent with dot, dot, dot. The related arithmetic series is 2 plus 10 plus 18 plus 26, and you sum all the rest of the terms in that sequence. Um, so, if we take a uh, take a look at our example down here, it's just the same example we have in the box, but with the arrow you can see how it goes from a sequence to a series, and here it should actually say arithmetic arithmetic sequence because it is an arithmetic sequence. We have the same common difference of eight between each term, so we're adding eight to get to the next term every time. Okay. And next, the partial sum of a sequence is again the sum of the finite number of terms, or if the sequence has infinite terms, it could be the sum of all the numbers, making n equals infinity. So if a sequence goes on forever, maybe um, you could uh, calculate for the sum of n terms and n equals infinity, but for now, we'll stick to finite numbers of terms from a sequence, 
and the template for partial sum is s of n equals t1 plus t2 term 1 plus term 2 plus term 3 plus term 4 and so so on until term n right so if we take a look at our example down here if we have a sequence of 2 10 18 26 and so on the same arithmetic sequence we had uh, in the last example up here um, if we take the partial sum um, of s4 right only to the fourth term we add the first term second term third term and fourth term right we start at the first term we end at the fourth term because n equals four in this case as we can see in the subscript so the first four terms are the ones that are shown right here so we just plug them in 2 plus 10 plus 18 plus 26 if you add those up we'll get 56 and so s4 equals 56 the partial sum uh, to the nth term when n equals 4 is 56 for this particular arithmetic se uh, sequence finally let's take a look at the partial sum formula specifically for arithmetic sequences so there are two versions to the formula and they go as follow the first version is s of n so the partial sum to the nth term equals n the um, amount of terms we want to add together times 2 times a which is our first term as we can see down here plus n minus 1 all in brackets again n is the number of terms we're adding up to um, times d which is the common difference between each term all divided by 2 or the second version is sn equals n times t1 which is our first term plus tn which is the term we are uh, stopping at so if we have a sequence and we're calculating s of 4 this this would be t4 right if s we're f if we're calculating s4 then t4 okay let um, me erase that so if we know uh, a the first term of the sequence and d the common difference we would use the first formula right because in the first formula we need the first term the common difference and of course we know what we're calculating to or what um sorry what how many terms we're adding together so we should have n um sometimes we don't but usually it says calculate for s and of a number and that number is going to equal n right so we should know the first term and the common difference to use the first formula and if we know the first term t1 um, of our partials sorry if we know the first term and the last term of um not the last term of the sequence if we know the first term of, of the sequence and the nth term right whatever n is equal to we would use the second formula right because in the second formula we always obviously need the first term and the last term of our partial sum and of course n and again we should know n it should be the subscript of s okay that is it for the video make sure you guys keep practicing and i'll see you in the next video